Last month, a Palestinian-American teenager was shot and killed by Israeli troops in the West Bank. It's just one instance of violence in the Palestinian territory. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata spoke exclusively with the teen's father. He's full of life, and they took that away from him. When Hafez Ajak brought his family from Louisiana to the quiet village of al Mazra Asharkir in the West Bank last summer, he never imagined it would cost him his son's life. 17-year-old Taufiq was getting to know his Palestinian roots before heading off to university in New Orleans. On January 19, Taufiq and his best friend set off in the family's pickup truck for a barbecue on their family farm. It's dangerous. Uh, Domar Zaban was tending his olive grove nearby when he says he saw two Israeli settlers getting out of a car and firing at Taufiq's vehicle. So you were hiding at this point? Yes, I hid, he said. I went like this so that they wouldn't see me and shoot me. Then, he said, Israeli security forces arrived. Zaban said he heard more shots. When he looked up, Taufiq had lost control of his car. It had rolled several times, landing right over there. His father rushed to the scene. They, they executed my son right then and there. Ajak filmed the vehicle. It shattered windscreen. The blood pooled on the car floor. The ten bullet holes, four of them through the rear window. One of those bullets hit Taufiq in the head, cutting short his dreams of one day working for NASA. Now, instead of a joyful homecoming, his ancestral land has become his final resting place, soaked with the tears of his grief-stricken mother and heartbroken brother. And how many fathers and mothers have to say goodbye to their children? How many more? Anguish and rage fuel Ajak's quest for answers. They are killer machines and they're using our tax dollars in the U.S. to support, to support the weapons to kill our own children. This is not the first time someone has been killed here. Highway 60 is infamous, known as the road of death. Over a year ago, eyewitness Domar Zaban's 16-year-old son Nishan and his cousin were also targeted while picking olives on their land. They say settlers shot them both at point-blank range. Are you able to just show us quickly? Nishan survived a bullet to the chest. His cousin did not. You're lucky to be alive. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Since October 7, nearly 370 people have been killed in the occupied West Bank, mainly by Israeli soldiers, but also settlers who are well armed, with more than 700,000 of them living in West Bank settlements regarded as illegal under international law. Just last week, the U.S. sanctioned four settlers accused of violence, but Ajak says that is not enough. What should America be doing? America needs to stop the support of Israel now. And you need to recognize the state of Palestine and give these people their rights. But you're supporting a regime that is killing people, it's killing children. He does not believe he will get any justice for his son's killing. We asked police for an interview. Instead, they sent a written statement saying an investigation is in progress. Ajak is worried about the rest of his children, saying that Taufik's death has put hatred in his younger son's heart. I didn't raise him to hate anyone. I didn't raise him with hateness, but you, you, you kind of putting something in people's heart and soil that is never going to change. And every night, his seven-year-old daughter asks him why her brother was killed. And that's my question to my government. How do you explain that to a seven years old girl? What do I tell her, Mr. President, Secretary of State, Mr. Blinken? What do I tell my daughter? The State Department says it is devastated by Taufik's death and has urged the Israeli government to conduct a speedy investigation that looks at appropriate accountability measures. John? Deborah, it's an extraordinary story. Um, what is the mood in the West Bank as you as you find it? 
Well, you know, there's been trouble with Israeli settlers for, here, for years now, John, as you well know, and accusations that the Israeli security forces commit human rights violations in the occupied West Bank are also not new, but those have ramped up to unprecedented levels since the October 7 attack. And, of course, it's against this backdrop of Israel's war in Gaza, which really is one of the heaviest bombing campaigns, quite frankly, in the history of modern warfare. Over 27,000 heading for 28,000 people killed. And according to Hamas, 70 percent of those are women and children. So the mood is very grim. And the West Bank is run by the very moderate Palestinian Authority. Mm -hmm. But there's this whole new generation of young people. They're watching what's happening in Gaza. They're seeing the violence in the West Bank. And as a result, alarmingly, support for Hamas yeah. is growing in the West Bank. In fact, people tell us that the biggest recruiter for Hamas right now is Israel itself. And quickly before I, before I let you go, Deborah, what do, we, what do we know, if anything, about the, this elusive deal between Israel and Hamas? What's, what's the latest you're hearing? Well, John, you know, we, we refer to it here as a mirage. You, it seems so close. It seems like something's going to happen. And then at the last minute, everything falls through and everyone is really, really frustrated. And with this latest um, response by Benjamin Netanyahu, he has firmly rejected what Hamas proposed, which was a 135-day ceasefire in exchange for the release of hostages and also for... Um, talks to begin talking about the end of war and a full withdrawal of Israeli troops. So that was the deal on the table. He has rejected that. And that is devastating news for those in um, Gaza who are in the middle of this war. They've endured four months of it. And also for the families of hostages um, who are saying that they want their loved ones to come back. Former hostages spoke today and said that um, if Netanyahu continues in this vein, um, there'll be no more hostages to save, John. Deborah Pata, as always, we are very grateful for your reporting in Jerusalem. Thank you.